In the heart of the world's oceans, where the horizon meets the sky, lies a floating vessel that defies imagination. Welcome to the USS Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, regarded as one of the largest and most impressive warships in the world. This is not just a ship, it's a floating city tower and a self-contained vessel where thousands of sailors live, work, and serve on the front lines of global security. But within the confined spaces of this floating vessel, how is life sustained and combat readiness maintained? How do the sailors and aviators overcome the challenges of isolation, constant motion, and the ever-present dangers that come with operating a city-sized warship in the middle of the ocean? Join us as we take an exclusive look inside the USS Nimitz-class aircraft carrier and discover what it takes to keep this incredible vessel at its best. The Features of the USS Nimitz Carrier An aircraft carrier, at its core, is a ship equipped with a flight deck serving as a runway for aircraft takeoff and landing. With speeds exceeding 40 miles per hour, carriers boast the capability to traverse oceans swiftly. The USS Nimitz-class mega aircraft carriers, comprising nearly 1 billion components, stand as marvels of engineering. Despite their intricate nature, their fundamental principles are pretty straightforward. These vessels are built to execute four essential functions. Transport diverse aircraft overseas, launch and recover planes, function as a mobile command center for military operations, and accommodate the personnel involved in these activities. Achieving these objectives requires a fusion of a ship, an air force base, and small city elements. This includes a flight deck for aircraft operations, a hangar deck below for aircraft storage, an island atop the flight deck for command operations, living and working spaces for the crew, a power plant for propulsion and electricity generation, as well as various systems for sustenance and waste management. The hull, the primary body of the ship floating in water, features robust steel plates providing effective protection against fire and combat damage. The ship's structural integrity relies on three key horizontal elements spanning the hull. The keel, iron spine at the ship's base, the flight deck, and the hangar deck. The underwater hull is rounded and slender, while the above water part expands outward, forming the expansive flight deck. Life aboard USS Nimitz, sailors' living conditions. Life on the USS Nimitz-class aircraft carrier is a dynamic experience for more than 5,000 sailors within the vessel. Despite the massive size of the vessel, their living quarters, known as berthing areas or berths, are surprisingly compact yet strategically designed to maximize limited space. The hierarchical organization assigns officers and enlisted personnel to separate sleeping quarters. Enlisted personnel's berths feature bunk beds, or racks, stacked three high for space efficiency, each rack, measuring approximately 6.5 feet long, 3 feet wide, and 2 feet high, provides a comfortable resting space with a thin mattress, small pillow, and a privacy curtain. A compact storage area, known as the coffin locker beneath the mattress, allows sailors to store personal belongings. Learning to pack efficiently becomes crucial due to limited storage space. Larger shared storage areas are available for uniforms and equipment, fostering camaraderie among sailors who must share lockers. Communal restrooms and shower facilities, conveniently located near berthing areas, necessitate crew members to maintain order and cleanliness by taking turns cleaning. Maintaining a sense of organization and discipline in these confined living spaces is crucial, given the close quarters that challenge privacy. The tight sleeping arrangements foster friendships, a vital element for morale during long deployments at sea. The U.S. Navy enforces strict rules regarding personal relationships and intimacy on board, prohibiting fraternization and implementing policies to ensure professionalism and privacy. Spaces for privacy and decompression, such as lounge areas or crew lounges, offer sailors a retreat during off-duty hours. Equipped with comfortable seating, televisions, and recreational activities, these areas provide a break from the demands of duty. Recreational facilities like gyms with various exercise equipment, libraries, and educational programs contribute to sailors' well-being, allowing them to pursue interests and maintain physical fitness. The ship's dining facilities, or galleys, play a crucial role in maintaining the crew's dietary requirements. 
over 17,300 daily meals are prepared by a dedicated team of culinary specialists. The galleys are designed to cater to diverse dietary needs, featuring sections like the main serving line, salad bar, and sandwich bar. The meal schedule includes breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a late night meal, ensuring sailors working night shifts or those who missed earlier meals are accommodated. Hygiene and sanitation protocols in the galleys are strictly adhered to with regular inspections to maintain a safe and sanitary environment. Special occasions and holidays are celebrated with festive menus, enhancing crew morale. The culinary team's versatility is showcased not only in large-scale meal preparations, but also in catering to smaller gatherings and events, reflecting the commitment to excellence aboard the USS Nimitz. The Ship Store The Ship Store, also known as the Jadunk, stands as a crucial resource for the crew of a USS Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. This onboard grocery store, operating with an average daily revenue of around $10,000 and over 1,050 transactions, plays a pivotal role in offering sailors essential items and creature comforts while at sea. Stocked with a diverse array of products, the ship store caters to sailors' needs, from toiletries and clothing items to recreational items like books, magazines, and electronics. Snacks, beverages, and other non-perishables also fill the shelves, providing sailors with familiar comforts during their downtime. What sets the ship's store apart is its non-profit status, ensuring that item prices are typically lower than onshore stores, with no sales tax. Rather than aiming for profit, the store's objective is to cover the cost of goods and operational expenses. The revenue-generated contributes to supporting morale, welfare, and recreation programs on the carrier, enhancing the overall quality of life for the crew. The ship store is managed by a dedicated team of sailors known as Ship's Servicemen, SH, who undergo specialized training in retail operations, inventory management, and customer service. These personnel handle all aspects of the store's operation, including stocking shelves, managing inventory, assisting customers, and processing transactions. Collaboration with the supply department ensures the store remains well-stocked to meet the crew's needs. To maintain a steady supply of goods, the ship store relies on replenishments at sea, RAs, operations. During these operations, support ships transfer essential provisions, including items for the ship store, while the carrier is still underway. This intricate process involves the transfer of goods using pulley cables and cranes, with SH personnel and other crew members working together to unload, transport, inventory, and store the supplies. Beyond the main ship store, some carriers have smaller satellite stores or vending machines located throughout the ship, offering sailors convenient access to essential products. This proves particularly helpful for those working in remote areas or during times when the main store is closed. In instances where the ship store runs out of stock, replenishment at sea operations are conducted to resupply essential items, ensuring goods remain available for the crew. The underway replenishment process allows for the transfer of groceries, among other supplies, between ships while in motion. Modern methods include vertical replenishment using helicopters or alongside connected replenishment, with the latter being the most commonly used on aircraft carriers. Alongside connected replenishment involves transferring liquids, ammunition, brake bulk goods, and groceries. Ships approach one another, approximately 30 yards apart, and use various equipment for transfer, including a gun line, pneumatic line thrower, or shot line. Experienced helmsmen and attentive bridge crews are crucial to prevent collisions and ruptures during this process. Emergency breakaway procedures are in place, but may result in some loss of goods. Once replenishment is completed, a distinctive tune is played over the supplier's public address system as U.S. Navy ships separate. Supplies are then sorted and distributed to the respective units in the hangar, ensuring sailors have all the necessities at their disposal. Basic Amenities Among the most widely used amenities in the USS Nimitz aircraft carrier is the ship's Internet Café, a valuable resource for sailors seeking to access the Internet, send emails, and maintain connections with their families and friends back home. 
Despite limited bandwidth and potentially slower connections compared to onshore facilities, this service plays a crucial role in enabling sailors to sustain relationships and stay informed about global events beyond the confines of the ship. In the quest to address the paramount need for healthcare services for the thousands of crew members living and working in close quarters for extended periods, the USS Nimitz-class carrier is equipped with a comprehensive medical facility commonly referred to as the ship's hospital. This facility serves a spectrum of medical requirements, spanning routine checkups to emergency care and surgical procedures. Manned by a proficient team of medical professionals, including doctors, nurses, and hospital corpsmen, the ship's hospital ensures timely and adept care for the crew. The medical staff undergoes regular training sessions to uphold their skills and educates non-medical crew members on essential first aid and emergency procedures. The ship's hospital is organized into specialized departments to cater to diverse healthcare needs. These departments encompass general medicine, dentistry, optometry, radiology, laboratory services, and pharmacy. Equipped with cutting-edge diagnostic tools and medical equipment, the facility empowers medical staff to provide precise diagnoses and effective treatments for a range of medical conditions. The General Medicine Department attends to the primary care needs of sailors, handling routine checkups, vaccinations, and treatment for common illnesses, such as colds and flu. For more intricate health issues, doctors can engage in telemedicine consultations with specialists ashore, ensuring the crew receives optimal care even in challenging circumstances. The Flight Deck Working on an aircraft carrier flight deck is both thrilling and risky, and it's among the loudest work environments globally. Although the deck might resemble a regular land runway, its smaller size and unique operations make it stand out. With planes landing and taking off at a rapid pace in a confined space, the crew faces constant dangers, from jet engine suction to potential falls off the deck. The flight deck's limited length poses challenges for standard landings and takeoffs, requiring specialized machinery. To aid takeoff, carriers create extra airflow by sailing through the ocean into the wind. This airflow over the wings lowers the minimum takeoff speed. Crucial to takeoff are the carrier's four catapults, powerful systems with pistons inside parallel cylinders beneath the deck. The pistons, equipped with metal lugs, attach to a shuttle through rubber flanges. Before takeoff, the aircraft is positioned and the crew connects the tow bar and hold back. Hand signals guide the pilot through engine restart and pre-launch checks. Once cleared, steam from the ship's reactors fills the catapult cylinders, propelling the aircraft forward at high speed, generating the lift needed for takeoff. During takeoff, the aircraft, held by the shuttle, accelerates with steam-driven force. The tow bar releases, and this system can catapult a 45 Zero, zero, zero pound aircraft from zero to 165 miles per hour in just two seconds. If takeoff fails, pilots have ejector seats as a last resort. However, landing on the flight deck is equally challenging. With only about 500 feet of runway space, each landing requires a tail hook on the aircraft. The pilot aims to catch one of the four arresting wires, sturdy cables attached to hydraulic cylinders below deck. If successful, the arresting wire system stops a 54,000-pound aircraft, traveling at 150 miles per hour in just two seconds, using a 315-foot landing area. Executing this impressive trick requires the pilot to approach the deck at a precise angle. The landing procedure commences as returning aircraft assemble in a large oval flying pattern near the carrier. The Carrier Air Traffic Control Center, located below deck, determines the landing order based on fuel levels, aircraft with low fuel land first. When it's time for an aircraft to land, the pilot breaks away from the pattern and heads toward the ship's stern. Landing signals officers, LSOs, assist with radio communication and deck lights to guide the aircraft. Pilots also rely on the Fresnel Lens Optical Landing System, known as the Lens, which includes lights and lenses on a stabilized platform. The lens projects light beams into the sky at different angles, providing landing guidance. 
The pilot observes different lights based on the approach angle. An amber light, the meatball aligned with green lights, indicates the correct approach. If above, the aircraft is too high, below, too low, and red lights signal a dangerously low approach. Upon landing, the pilot accelerates instead of slowing down, preparing for takeoff if the tail hook misses arresting wires. The 14-degree tilted runway allows bolters to take off from the ship's side. After landing, the aircraft is secured on the flight deck side. Safety measures include nets, a fire truck, water tanks, and foam. Flight deck personnel wear float coats, cranial helmets, and are equipped for potential engine-related risks. The flight deck crew is also responsible for recovering completed missions. Using cables and hooks, they perform arrested landings, demanding precise piloting skills to land safely on the deck at the right speed. Once the aircraft safely lands on the deck, the flight crew immediately commences their duties. They secure the aircraft to the deck, refuel it, and perform any necessary maintenance or repairs. This meticulous process ensures that the aircraft is ready for its next mission, repeating the cycle seamlessly. But that's not the end of the remarkable activities on an aircraft carrier's flight deck. Nestled in the middle is a surprisingly small space known as the bubble, offering an astonishing vantage point for crucial work. Amidst the hustle of helmet-clad sailors safeguarding their ears from the deafening noise, a select group of officers enjoy a unique perspective from one of the carrier's smallest rooms, the bubble. The Integrated Catapult Control System, ICCS, also referred to as the bubble, serves as the nerve center on modern United States Navy aircraft carrier's flight decks. This station plays a pivotal role in safely and efficiently launching aircraft. Unlike traditional setups requiring multiple remote stations and intricate intercommunications for each takeoff, the ICCS streamlines the process, minimizing the risk of errors that could lead to accidents. The officer stationed in the bubble shoulders a substantial responsibility due to the critical nature of their role. Before each launch, the sailor in the bubble conducts safety checks. Once within the bubble, they monitor winds, ensure a clear path, and keep a close eye on the front-facing board. A safety button illuminates if any potential danger is detected, allowing for an immediate launch pause. Just before takeoff, the officer observes the pilot. Any movement or light adjustments signal a potential delay for safety reasons, especially during night operations. The ICCS is a distributed system with components located on the flight deck and a central charging panel below deck. It controls two adjacent catapults and incorporates the catapult officer control console and monitor control console. These consoles are connected to remote control panels for each catapult through sound-powered phones and indicator lights. In emergencies, control tasks can be shifted to the emergency deck edge control panel or the central charging panel with the catapult officer taking command. The catapult officer control console, monitor control console, and central charging panel work in tandem to direct catapult activities. The control console features a wraparound design for convenience, with separate control panels for each controlled catapult. Operating panels include status lights, switches for different catapult phases, the nose gear launch switch, manual aircraft data input system readouts, array switches, and the capacity selector valve position console. These elements empower the operator to guide the catapult through a standard launching cycle. While the bubble is a central hub for catapult operations, it's noteworthy that Nimitz-class carriers also retain older remote stations for catapult operation. Therefore, if the bubble isn't utilized, these remote stations are ready to assist in the aircraft launch process. The Traditions Inside the USS Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, a tapestry of traditions weaves through the daily fabric of life, providing sailors with moments of connection, relief, and camaraderie amid the demanding rigors of their duties. Among these cherished traditions are activities like swim call, fishing, and the boot shoot. Swim call stands out as a highly anticipated event, granting sailors a respite from their routine tasks to revel in some leisure time amidst the vastness of the open ocean. Usually held in calm, clear waters with favorable weather conditions, the ship comes to a gentle halt 
permitting the crew to plunge into the ocean from the carrier's side. This rare opportunity allows sailors to unwind, escape the ship's confined spaces, and momentarily bask in the freedom of the sea. Putting safety first, meticulous checks precede swim calls to ensure the absence of potential hazards like marine life or debris. Designated swimming zones are established, overseen by multiple vigilant lifeguards. Safety boats patrol the perimeter, ensuring swimmers stay within bounds and offering assistance if required. Another famous tradition on the ship is fishing. When the carrier is anchored or positioned in a designated fishing area, sailors seize the chance to cast their lines into the ocean. Beyond providing a break from routine, this leisurely pursuit connects sailors with nature, offering the excitement of catching their own dinner. The ship's culinary team often prepares the caught fish, introducing a welcomed variety to the regular menu. The boot shoot, a symbolic gesture, signifies the culmination of a sailor's deployment on a USS Nimitz-class carrier. Before departing the ship upon completing their tour of duty, sailors can opt to partake in this ritual. Worn-out boots are ceremoniously tossed off the flight deck into the ocean, symbolizing the conclusion of a significant chapter in their lives. It serves as a poignant farewell to the ship and their fellow crew members, prompting reflection on shared experiences, friendships, and challenges overcome. These traditions are pivotal in fostering a positive atmosphere on Nimitz-class carriers. They offer vital opportunities for the crew to build bonds, unwind, and create enduring memories. As the sun sets on another day of dedicated service, the sailors of the U.S. Navy stand ready to confront whatever challenges lie ahead. From the bustling flight decks of aircraft carriers to the silent depths explored by submarines, their commitment and distinction in serving their country remain remarkable.